So for this final project, we're going to create a leather texture. Um, I downloaded this uh, wonderful chair model from the asset sharing site at luxology.com and the original model is by Brent Chamberlain so I want to say a big thank you to Brent for making such a high quality asset for us to work with. He's also the creator of these uh, picture frames that are on the wall behind here. So um, what I've done is I've uh, I've left the original wood texture that was on there that Brent created and for the leather I've just dragged um, and dropped a uh, preset from the uh, presets of ship with Modo onto the, uh, onto the leather and I've done a test render and we can have a look at it. So if this was a, a small detail in a, in a larger scene the texture would be fine but as we're making the chair the focal point of our shot we're going to have to change it and again because it's the focal point of our shot I think we should create a bespoke texture that is made specially for this particular chair um, so rather than use a symbol and maybe use tiling textures or procedurals I think in order to get the right level of detail and the right kind of realism we're going to have to make something specifically tailored for this chair so um, this is what we're going to do in this project we're going to do very little in the way of painting diffuse texture maps. Most of the work we're going to do is going to be concerned with breaking up the reflections. So this means bump maps and especially reflection maps. Um, because this is black leather obviously there isn't really that much colour information involved. We are going to paint a tiny bit but it's mostly going to be reflections. And the next thing I want to talk about is attention to detail and layering details on top of each other because a lot of the maps we're going to paint are going to be barely visible in the final result. I mean they're going to be extremely subtle but they are going to play a crucial role in just very subtly breaking up the reflections on the leather so that it looks a little bit more realistic. And um, layering detail is essentially the approach we've taken in the previous two projects um, on the tree frog, for instance, we painted um, f the first map was literally just um, color, and then on top of that we we created another map which uh, had a certain kind of detail, and then on top of that we painted another map that had a different kind of detail on it, different kind of texture, and it's by this layering of one kind of detail on top of another that we gradually build up something realistic and believable. So um, it's important to look at reference very closely in order to uh, to get a feel for the right kind of uh, detail that we need to build so I've taken some photos of um, my leather sofa and we're going to use one of these photos or a couple of them to to build a texture but most of what we're going to be doing with these photos really or what I'm doing is is just looking at them and looking at the way that the reflections are broken up you can see for instance in this area there's a lot of difference between some some sort of areas of glossiness and some areas of duller um, and another thing is the way that the folds and the uneven evenness of the surface is breaking up the reflection so we don't have a smooth reflection going across but the actual variation in the surface itself is 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 modulating the reflection so this is also something that we're going to look at and uh, one of the most important things we're going to need to do in order to um, to make this uh, leather surface more believable is to do some sculpting, to sculpt some folds in, which is essentially a, a part of the texture building process in this uh, in this case. So um, let's get started. So I've discarded the uh, preset leather material that uh, that I applied to this model, and I've created um, a basic sort of leather material that we're going to use as a starting point. So it's got uh, 0 0.1 in the specular and 40% in the Fresnel and I've also ticked uh, conserve energy, match specular, blurry refraction are all on. So we've got essentially it looks a little bit sort of smooth and glossy at the moment but uh, once we've applied some maps and some displacement it's going to get broken up and look much more leather like. Um, the first thing I want to do is um, we can do something very cheaply. Um, this wood material has got, um, or this wood mesh has got these hard edges because, um, again, this asset wasn't designed to be seen um, as a focal point. But rather than go in and model a bevel, the first thing we can do here is just use 601's new rounded edge feature just to uh, very cheaply um, give us a beveled edge here. So I'm just going to type in 2 millimeters here and uh, you can see as the um, 
preview clears up, we've got this nice rounded edge here on the wood straight away. So that's uh, that's been a a real time saver. Now another thing that I've already set up is a dummy material on the leather, and I'll show you why. Because if we go into the paint tab, you can see that this. Uh, black material makes it really hard to see what you're doing. So just for when we're painting and sculpting, I've applied a uh, a dummy white material that I just turn on um, when I need to see what I'm doing. Another thing I want to set up before we actually uh, get painting is a render pass because we're going to do a lot of test rendering here. Um, I want my sort of main render to be really quick but I also want to set up my settings for my final high quality render now so that um, I don't have to keep changing the, all, all these settings, I could just uh, switch to the render pass or render the pass, the final quality pass uh, in one click rather than having to change a bunch of settings each time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new pass group, call it render quality OK that, and I'm going to create a new pass inside this group, call it uh, Final Render. And I'm just going to go through and change a few settings so that um, they get applied to this pass. So I'm going to go to my AA settings and increase the AA to 256. And every time I change a setting, I'm going to hit Apply. Um, while you're within a pass, it's really important to be aware that you're actually inside that pass and especially if you've got auto add-on, which is the default, any change that you make can get recorded to that pass rather than your sort of main scene. So what I like to do is just go into the render pass and make the changes I need to make and then get out of it so that I don't get confused as to what changes I've made where. And uh, another thing you can do is just check how many channels are inside your your pass in the in the groups tab so we'll do that um, next setting I want to change is to go down to, there's an area light in the window and I want to increase the samples to 4096 and I'm going to apply that and I want to go to the wood material and increase the reflection samples to 256 and let's apply that I want to go to the GI and increase my indirect bounces to 16 let's apply that I want to go and turn click on the floor material and I want to enable this displacement map let me just apply that and finally I want to go to the leather material and increase the blurry reflection rays to 4096 let me just uh, finally apply that now all these settings are going to increase render times dramatically which is why I want them in a separate pass so that when I'm doing my tests I can render quickly but when I need to do a, a final quality render just to see how everything's looking um, I just need to render this one pass and uh, well, Obviously, it will take a lot longer to render, but I can get a really good idea of um, of what the final quality is going to be like. So we added uh, six things to our render pass, and we can see here there's six channels in the pass. So that's perfect. So now I'm going to get out of the pass. So now I'm just in the in the main scene itself. So any change I make from now on gets applied to the main scene, and hopefully. As long as I, I don't touch this pass again, it should just keep the settings that we've set. And obviously if I need to go back into the pass to add new settings, I just select it from the uh, passes menu, make whatever changes I need to make, apply them, and then get out again. So um, now we should be ready to start painting. So now I want to create an imaging brush that's based on a leather pattern. So the way I'm going to do this, um, I've taken these two photographs um, with a macro lens of my leather sofa and um, I want to extract this leather pattern from them. So what I'm going to do is just make a selection here, copy that. Uh, I've created a new image at uh, 1024 pixels wide. Paste that uh, leather in, just rescale it. Doesn't uh, really matter if it doesn't quite fill the 
the frame because they've got the other pattern here as well so I'm just gonna because the lighting is slightly uneven in these photos I used a diffuse flash but there's still a bit of uh, direction to the lighting it's stronger at the top so I'm just extracting the top part of the of this image uh, let me just paste that in here resize that okay that and uh, what I need to do is increase the contrast so I'm going to just quickly add a curved adjustment layer bring that right up and and then I'm going to add a threshold layer so that uh, we've literally just got black and white information so I think is it still a bit uneven in the corner here so I'm just going to rescale that slightly like that and Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to paint a mask because we've got the image, the other image underneath. So let me just grab this layer, shunt it over to this side, and um, with a large, soft airbrush, just uh, locate my cursor. I've just got a set of actions here. You can see I've got this uh, custom Photoshop workspace. I've got a set of actions of my most used command commands, and they're set to button mode. Uh, that means that I can really quickly, like select an airbrush or any command that I use a lot. I tend to put in this uh, in this panel here because uh, when you're using a tablet, um, it's just a lot quicker than uh, than using the keyboard shortcuts. It's just quicker to just go and quickly click in this panel. So set the color to black in the mask and just paint away these. Um, dark areas. So using the threshold and the curves together, but especially the threshold, means that uh, we um, we get really nice uh, sharp details. If I was to turn the threshold off, you can see there's a bit of fuzziness where I painted the mask um, because of the airbrush soft edges, but once you get the threshold on there, it's all gone. So um, this is more or less okay. I'm just going to flatten the whole thing. And then I'm going to use the offset filter to tidy up the edges so you go filter other offset and 512 by 512 we're going to need to add another threshold I'll show you why in a second before I do it actually so now I get the clone stamp and uh, let me just uh, increase the size and when you're cloning across a seam like this um, just make sure that you vary your sample point so that you don't create repeating patterns. If you can see a repeating pattern appearing a bit like it is now, just go and sample from somewhere else and just paint in there just to just to vary it. Um, so we're going to sample all over our image to paint out this seam. And you can probably see on the edges of the uh, stamp there's this fuzzy edge again, this fuzzy sort of slight fuzziness. It's sort of a bit grey rather than the black and white that we've got elsewhere. And that's obviously because the uh, stamp's got soft edges now you could get around this by using a hard edge stamp but then again the quality of the stroke would suffer quite a lot so all you need to do really is just to add another um, threshold adjustment layer on top of, uh, on top of the, uh, the image that you're painting and uh, it will all go there will be no fuzziness at all so I just need to get a nice kind of pattern going takes a bit of work make sure that the transitions aren't too hard or too weird and that when this tiles that there isn't going to be a lot of visible repetition although the way that we're going to use this texture we're not going to actually use it as a tiling texture so we're actually going to use it as an image ink so we're not going to suffer from the repeat problem so badly because with image ink you can always go and a bit like I am now, go and sort of paint in extra details or paint out any repeating areas. So you do have more flexibility with that particular workflow. So this will do for now. I mean, you can see what I'm doing. It would really need a bit more time and care. But we've basically created a very harsh image pattern, um, leather pattern. And all you need to do is to save that um, as a JPEG and put it in a folder that your image inks are pointing to so I've got my own custom image inks folder and uh, when I when I use image ink in Modo I'll just show you very quickly so if I activate an airbrush and image ink I've got my own I've, I've created my own path to a folder on my hard drive where I keep my custom image inks so I've got um, a leather texture here that is uh, was created in the same way that I've just demonstrated in Photoshop 
So I've created a new image at 4K and I've placed it in our black leather material. So I'm going to start painting with the image ink that we've just created. So activate the airbrush and image ink. Now in this case I am just going to use the image itself so I'm not going to use the use colour as mask option and I'll explain the reason for that as I paint. So let me just select the leather texture from the image ink folder and I'm just going to click in the viewport to activate the gizmo and let me just scale it down a bit and I'm going to move it to a side because if I've got repeat on down here then it will still paint on the mesh so with my color set to white I'm going to drag a brush out and remember with the color set to white you're actually just painting with the image itself so um, you could use the stamp option to fill the um, to, to sort of project down onto the mesh from, from your, your viewport position but I think it's better to actually go in and paint by hand and the reason is if you do it this way you can vary the, um, the effect, you, you don't have to paint solidly everywhere, you can sort of um, leave little gaps and just make it more organic and it's also the reason why I think this is a better method than using a tiling texture because you can create variety and the other thing that you can do this will only work if you paint with the image itself and not using the image as a mask because obviously if you have transparency this this trick doesn't work but you see where those repeating patterns starting to appear all you need to do is to move or resize or rotate your gizmo a bit moving it's the most effective and then you can simply just paint over the uh, the bits that look like they're repeating and uh, they disappear so it's a really versatile and powerful way of applying a texture so if you keep sort of moving your gizmo rotating it and resizing it to create variety then you should be able to paint this without getting too much repetition so it's a case of just going around the model and painting in the texture so I'm going to pause the video while I finish doing this with the image ink painted we can now start setting up the texture so because we painted with the uh, raw black and white image the first thing I need to do um, because I don't want it to be a black and white texture I'm going to set the mode to multiply and that is going to basically get rid of the white so um, however since our underlying texture is black um, once we uh, turn off this dummy texture black on black is going to give us exactly nothing so I've created a noise layer with some sort of brown color now if we switch to the render tab you can see the chair's gone brown but it's just a temporary measure um, I've also set up a second camera that we can use for close-ups so I'm just going to go to the uh, render properties and change to camera 2 and I'm going to need to take depth of field off temporarily so I can see what I'm doing so you can just see the um, leather pattern that we've just painted is starting to appear on the leather but I don't want this noise texture to be quite so um, prominent so I'm going to turn the opacity down to 20 just see what that looks like I think that's probably going to give us a nice subtle kind of effect but in order to really see it I need to do a test render here is the result of the test render if I zoom in you can see that the effect is extremely subtle um, the chair might be a little bit too brown at the moment but I might use a gradient later, later on to uh, darken the edges um, I might also be tempted to apply this, uh, this leather texture we've just painted as a bump map at some point but I'm going to resist the urge for now because um, I want quite a smooth leather finish so um, I'll avoid adding any bump maybe until later on in the process and then we'll see how it looks so now in the paint tab if you go to utilities and click on the add displacement texture button you can um, create a new displacement texture let's call it chair folds and uh, set it to 4k and if we leave the defaults on because basically this little button will set up the vector displacement for us correctly so we just ok that and um, should create the new texture there, just check in texture layers and it's already set a high and low value for us so now we can go to the sculpt tools and uh, start sculpting the folds so I'm just going to turn my leather pattern off and um, at the top of the sculpt tools if you click and hold the push tool you'll see there's two more tools underneath it and uh, we're going to select the fold tool from this list and uh, as the name implies this is very good for sculpting folds 
And now I'm just going to zoom in on the model and um, start sculpting some folds. So with the fold tool, um, you get this really nice sort of effect with a, a groove with two kind of lips around it. Um, but you can't really get away with using the fold tool alone to, to sculpt folds. I also recommend that you use um, the push tool as well to puff out the edges. And also use the smooth tool to... Um, let me just... Um, activate the smooth tool and change the offset amount maybe to 10 to make it more subtle go back to my fold tool and smooth out these ends so if you smooth out the end of the fold you get this nice effect where the, where the fold starts quite strongly and then um, fades off in, as, it, uh, as it gets further away from the point of tension so um, be sure to um, vary your folds, don't make them too regular. It's a good idea to sometimes just smooth out one side of a fold, um, that just makes it look more interesting and organic. And then as I said, if you get the push tool and maybe make the size a little bit bigger, just uh, puff out the middle bits and again smooth out the end so that um, you get more of a sort of up and down kind of effect. And you will have to go back and forth with a smooth tool just to just to get the right effect and uh, as usual just be patient and take your time but you can see quite quickly we're getting quite a, a nice effect you need to puff out pretty much all the uh, all the bits in between the folds and um, maybe go in with a smaller brush smooth out any hard edges you can always go back in with the uh, with the folder tool um, another thing that I would recommend is to use the push tool with a big or bigger radius and uh, maybe a, a lower offset let's try it at 10 and just sort of sculpt a few lumps in uh, and maybe holding down control a few sort of crevices you can always smooth them out um, just so there's a bit of uh, lumpiness to the uh, to the actual um, chair because it's stuffed with something and over time that is going to get become irregular um, Another thing that I would do is, uh, using the fold tool again, let's initialize that, I would uh, have folds coming in, let's just get the right brush size, coming in from all of the edges because um, there would be some tension there as the, uh, as the material is slightly stretched as it's sort of pulled into the edge of the, um, of the frame. And uh, also if you hold down control you will get uh, a fold in the opposite direction so it's good to vary that as well and always uh, keep using the, uh, the shift key to smooth out the folds. Make sure that your folds are of different lengths and uh, different widths so you can do that by zooming in and out and uh, in some areas it's good to have the, the folds fanning out so from a corner like this for instance it might fan out from the corner and uh, again use the shift key, vary the length, use the control key to have different kinds of uh, different kinds of folds next to each other and just as before make sure you do things in clusters so that it's not too regular so that there's uh, there's bunching in certain places and any time you think the effect isn't quite right you can just smooth it out and start again um, finally I would recommend that um, you add some irregularities to the mesh so if for instance we activate the move tool here what we could do is on, in this area here we can sort of make sure that it's not completely straight you know go around the corner and move things up and down you can also use the tangent pinch tool to make these sort of lips come closer together or holding down control you can push them further apart so like always it's just a case of going around the mesh and sculpting in as much detail as you can so take your time this will take a while but I've shown you the basic technique so what I'm going to do now is to pause the video while I go around and uh, finish sculpting this model and here is my finished sculpt so using the techniques that I showed you I've gone around and sculpted some folds and uh, some sort of lumpiness and irregularity so some of these are sort of variations uh, a different quality you can see there's kind of much more subtle folds down the side of the arm that were just created with the uh, push tool and uh, I've just gone around basically and made sure to, to to add some kind of surface quality to every area of this uh, chair and uh, for instance where the head might uh, be resting quite often and 
sort of caused a, a kind of depression in the stuffing. I've, I've uh, sculpted that in and I've also sculpted some very sort of subtle folding going in across these two buttons. I tried to think exactly where the folds and uh, the shapes would happen but um, in terms of technique it's nothing special, it's what I showed you. It's more the thought process that's important and that's what you should apply in this situation is try and think how would this chair you know how would this material get deformed and uh, you know where would the where would the surface variations be so this is probably a good time for a test render I'm going to switch back to the render tab and I'm going to deactivate my dummy material reactivate my other materials and uh, switch back to our regular render camera let's just have a quick look at that in preview and uh, fire a test render and see what it looks like and here is the result of our test render. So if we compare that to our original render with the preset material, you can see how far we've come. It's already starting to look a lot more like leather and a lot more realistic, and the sculpting especially is making a very big difference. If we zoom right in, you can see that our leather sort of texture that we painted with the image ink is very, very subtle, but it is there, and it's adding some sort of variation in the in the diffuse pattern of the leather and that's great we don't want it to be really strong we do want it to be very very subtle so um, the next thing we need to do is to start breaking up these glossy reflections because they're far too clean and too smooth we're going to create a, a new image ink brush so I'm just going to maximize this render preview I've just got a plane basically with a uh, with a UV map on it and I'm going to add a um, Enhance Modo Noise Marble Noise Pattern just to create this kind of marbly pattern and uh, we're just going to change a couple of settings I'm going to increase this to about 70 the size basically to about 70 and I'm going to turn the gain up to say 60 to increase the contrast and reduce the bias down to 20 to make the sort of lines a bit thicker. Um, that seems to be a reasonably good start so um, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new image so let's go to image low, sorry new image and um, I think a JPEG is fine so we'll call this um, marble.jpg and 1K is fine for this because it's going to be used for an imaging brush and uh, I'm going to set it above there and turn it off and I am going to bake it so let's go bake to texture and that is basically baking the procedural noise down into this um, into this JPEG so if I close the render and go to the images tab I can just save save it from here. So I've opened the image that uh, we just uh, baked in uh, Photoshop and I'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer just drag this slider to the left to make the white to white, do the same with the black and I'm going to add a threshold adjustment layer, just uh, bring out the veining and with those two adjustment layers still active I'm going to go to filter other offset and offset it by 512 pixels and um, just as before just quickly fix the seam I mean this seam is really pretty easy to fix there shouldn't be too much work involved here just gonna quickly go around and get rid of all the lines now you might be wondering why not just use the procedural texture directly on the mesh and the reason is that I actually prefer to use image inks because I've got more control over where they're placed and I don't have to cover the mesh I can you know paint it in specific places and the other thing is um, I want to blur this texture later because I want to soften the effect that it's going to create so this is essentially the best way of doing it so once I'm happy with everything I'm going to flatten the image and uh, just like we have done in the past I'm just going to run the OLM smoother filter just to anti-alias um, the hard edges that I've created and once that's done I can save this image in my image inks folder 
Back in my uh, paint tab in Modo, I've created a new 4K transparent PNG in my shader tree. I'm just going to turn off the leather pattern that uh, I created earlier, just so I can see more clearly. And I'm going to activate the airbrush tool with image ink on. I'm going to select the marble image ink that we just created. I'm going to click in the viewport to activate the widget, and I'm just going to shrink it down slightly, move it to one side and I'm going to have use color as mask and invert mask on and that means that I'm going to just paint through the black areas and uh, all the white areas of the image ink mask are going to remain transparent so just as before I'm just going to paint this pattern all over the chair and uh, I'll be back when I'm done so I've painted um, the image ink on the chair and you can see I've I have varied slightly where it goes and there's some places where I've made it more dense and others where I've made it less dense and areas where it fades out. So now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to drop the tool and uh, just before I carry on with it, I'm going to open it in Photoshop and just give it a slight Gaussian blur. So I'm going to go filter, Gaussian blur and I'm just going to give it a one pixel Gaussian blur for now and save that and reload it back into Modo. And with the mask now blurred, I'm going to set its effect to um, Reflection Fresnel and then I'm also going to create an instance of this map and I'm going to set that instance to uh, Specular Fresnel and I'm going to shift click these two masks and hit Control G to um, put them in their own group and I'm going to rename this Marbling and I'm going to set the opacity of the entire group to 30% just to basically soften the effect and switch back to my render tab disable my dummy material re-enable my leathery pattern just uh, have a quick look in preview how that's looking but uh, I think in order to really get a good look at it I'm going to have to fire a test render so I've ended up doing two test renders because um, if you look on the first one when we set the uh, opacity of the group to 30% the, the variation in the reflection strength is very very subtle you can see a little bit there but um, it really is extremely subtle now there is a possibility that at the end I will want it that subtle but I think for now I've gone and in increased it to 40% so you can see now it's a little bit clearer you can see it more obviously so it's possible that that is too strong but I think we'll wait and see the final result of all our maps together and make that judgment at the end but if I zoom in again you can see that the uh, texture of the leather is starting to look very interesting you know we've got the um, We've got some wear from our first diffuse pattern that uh, we painted down, and uh, we've got the uh, the sculpting, of course, and this uh, this marbling that creates uh, sort of interesting variations in the reflections. So I think we're making good progress, but there's still a few more maps to paint. So I've created a new transparent PNG at 4K in my black leather material and uh, we're going to paint some cracks on this so I'm going to activate the paintbrush tool set to a hard tip and activate the nozzle and enable jitter I'm going to set the strength to none and the size to pressure and make sure that the jitter settings um, are fairly high-ish not too high but around 10 or 20 percent is good set my color to black and drag out a small brush and I'm just going to draw out a test stroke so you can see with the um, with the jitter settings, we've got this nice sort of rough broken edge to the uh, to the stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully go around the mesh and start painting these cracks. Now it's good to sort of have a sort of snaky kind of feel to your strokes, not too snaky, but just a little bit. And sometimes the cracks can branch, and as ever they can cluster. And you can also use the folds as a kind of guide because obviously you would get cracks inside the folds. So I'm just going to go around and paint this pattern and uh, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back when I'm done. So here's the result of my painting. You can see I've gone around and painted these cracks where I thought they would appear. So on the edges of the arm here, um, going into the buttons and uh, going into the edges here where the folds are quite strong. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to set the effect from diffuse color to uh, specular Fresnel and I am going to create an instance of this and set that to Reflection Fresnel 
and then I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to duplicate that it's going to have different properties so I don't want to create an instance this time and I'm going to set that to specular amount and I'm going to instance that and set that to reflection amount and now I think it would be a good idea to select all of these and uh, stick them in a group and I'm going to rename this group cracks and um, I think I'm going to set the opacity to 20% in both instances and um, before I carry on I'm going to open a copy of this in Photoshop so in Photoshop I've opened the map we painted with the cracks and I'm just going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and just add a one pixel Gaussian blur just to soften it slightly and then I'm going to save a copy as because I don't want to save over the one we've actually uh, just painted and that we're using to modulate reflection. I want a separate map for bump, so I'm going to call this chairway bump. Just overwrite the one that I've already created, and um, I'm going to bring this into Modo. Switching back to Modo, I'm going to add layer, image map, load image, and I'm going to load the bump map that we've just saved out of Photoshop and I'm going to set its effect from diffuse color to bump I'm just quickly going to check it's got the right UV map assigned and it has and the next thing I'm going to do is change the low value to minus 100 and um, the next thing to do from this point is to do a test render to see how it's looking and here's the test render um, I think the bump is actually way too strong it's not very subtle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, render region and uh, just draw out a small sort of region so that we can do a, a quick test render and I'm going to change the um, bump amplitude, I'm just going to divide it by 2 so let's go divide 2 and open my render window again just to make sure that uh, the image is loaded and I'm going to hit F9 to do a quick render region I'll pause the video while it's rendering and this is the result of our render region so this is uh, the new render. I'm actually going to try and um, divide it by two again because um, I do want it to be extremely subtle so open my render window and do another render region and uh, this final render is looking much better the um, the effect of the bump now is really really subtle if you compare it to the uh, to the old bump which was really heavy handed this is just a tiny barely perceptible bump map which is exactly what I want so now we can move on to the next stage so the next thing we're going to do is paint a tiny little bit of extra color variation onto the leather so just with the airbrush we're just going to paint in soft areas of maybe where it's been slightly bleached or something so I've created a new uh, map this one's just a 2k map a transparent PNG as usual and I've turned off all the other layers apart from the vector displacement just so it's really clear what I'm doing and as usual I've got my dummy material on so I'm going to activate the airbrush with a soft tip and I'm going to create a sort of dark brown so more to the slightly yellowy side of brown and I'm going to drag out a brush and um, just very gently paint in some areas and I'm going to vary the color as I go vary the brush size so maybe there's a bit of tiny bit of bleaching here so remember this is going to be quite a bit lighter than the black you can see we're quite well, even though it's a dark color it's quite a long way from black now so this will be quite visible but maybe we need to um, reduce the opacity later on and I can always uh, turn on the black material if I really want to have a, a look at what it's looking like but it's pretty much a lot easier to paint on the white so maybe there's been a bit of wear here for instance on the arm so I'm going to paint a bit there and let's just shift the color slightly maybe make it less saturated drag out a different brush and maybe a bit of wear here and let's go a bit bolder with that and maybe just a patch here that's more worn and um, let's see where else we might have some wear um, well, obviously on the seat there could be a bit of wear so let's just paint a bit there and maybe on the back here and obviously 
where the head rests, it'd probably be quite a bit. I'm going to bring the saturation down, just paint a bit there, maybe make the color darker, go more towards the red and the saturated, just to vary what I'm painting. And obviously, if it's not, you know, when I when I render it and it doesn't work, I can always come back and erase um, and fine tune. But I think it's it's good to just introduce some some variation. And because we've got so little um, in the way of diffuse color on these maps, it's not really um, it's not really going to interfere with anything else. It might slightly override the uh, leather pattern that we painted right at the beginning. But uh, again, that doesn't really matter because if if the weather's sort of been worn, then that pattern probably would um, be less visible anyway. So I'm just going to try something like this and um, let's save the image. And um, as ever, I think at this point we'll need to do a test render to see what it looks like. So here's my test render, and you can see that at full opacity, this new map is way, way too strong. Uh, but I always knew I was going to have to reduce the opacity, but it's quite useful to see it like this, just so I can see what I think of the color choices that I made, and what I think the overall effect of the map's going to be like. So I quite like the sort of dark reddish color that I've chosen down here, but this lighter, less saturated color up here doesn't work so well for me, so I'm going to switch back to the paint tab and turn my dummy material back on, and switch to the eraser with a soft tip and just drag out a brush and just basically erase that bit of paint and switching back to the airbrush I'm going to go back to my sort of reddish color and uh, just paint patch again and um, drop the tool save the image and if I open the render window again and just as before I'm going to go edit render region and just drag out a square around here to just check out this new bit of uh, painting I've done and uh, hit F9 to render that and I'll pause the uh, video while it's rendering. And this is the result of the uh, render region so I'm happier with the colour, it more closely matches what's down here and the colour here is different but that's great, I think it's good to have some variation so I think the next thing we need to do is to um, turn render region off and reduce the opacity of this map drastically so I think it might be helpful to have a preview window open actually at this point just so I can see the effect of my changes so I'm going to try reducing the opacity down to maybe 20% Wait for preview to update. So that's pretty subtle now. Maybe still a little bit heavy actually, so I'm gonna try I'm gonna try it at fifteen percent. And at a glance that seems better, so as always it's time for another test render. I've actually done a series of test renders now with this new texture and um, this is the render at 15% and uh, basically you really can't see it so I tried another render at 20% and a third one at 30% and the texture is starting to appear but what I'm thinking now is um, I quite like this sort of dusty kind of thing I've got here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in the paint tab and use the eraser tool but not at 100 percent I'm going to use it at maybe 50 percent and I'm going to erase partially erase these brighter areas like here and here and here and um, see if I can sort of even out the texture a bit more back in the paint tab I've got uh, the texture selected so I'm going to click on the eraser with a soft tip and drag out a biggish brush and I'm going to set the opacity of this eraser to 50% and um, just gently initialize the brush and I'm just going to erase this and zoom in on the arms and erase this area and also this area that was quite strong maybe if I reduce the opacity a little bit more maybe to 30 percent I might also erase some of this stuff on the bottom now I'm not going to save the image until after the render 
just so I can be sure that I'm happy with what I've done. Um, but I think it's a good time now to fire another test render. I'm going to disable the dummy material. I'm going to leave the opacity at 100% for now because I, I want to see um, what effect my erasing has had on the texture. So this is the latest test render and it's looking much better. Um, but I still really like the area down here and it's still being overpowered by these sort of red areas. So I'm going to go back to the paint tab and with my dummy material on I'm going to initialize the eraser again, make sure it's still set to 30%, drag out a brush and um, just sort of paint here to initialize it. And I'm going to start erasing these red areas a little bit more, so just to make them more subtle. Now everything we're doing in this project is very, very subtle. Um, but all these really subtle details overlaid one over the other really help to create detail and even though that detail is barely perceptible in some cases it really does add up in the end it creates an almost subconscious kind of impression of, uh, of stuff going on so with this erasing done I'm gonna fire another test render so this is the latest render and um, I'm really happy with this area here still but I sort of over erased the stuff up here and maybe down here so I'm going to go back to the paint tab and uh, reinitialize my dummy material get the airbrush and this time I'm going to select more of a sort of yellowy brown because I preferred that dusty color I'm going to make it quite dark as well maybe make sure the opacity of the airbrush is just at 50 percent so it's not overpowering and uh, let's just initialize the airbrush drag out. Just, I've got to be careful not to paint anything too strongly. It's, it's, um, it takes a little bit of trial and error to get that balance basically and uh, I definitely want to paint some stuff down here. I'd like something in the corner here. Just like that. That's probably enough so I'm going to fire another test render. So one more render and uh, we're really close now. I just, uh, I'm happy with all of the top. I just want to paint a little bit more of the color in the corner here. So without any further ado, let's uh, go straight there. The airbrush tool is still active as it happens. So I'm just gonna paint a tiny little bit and uh, fire another test render. After a bit of toing and froing, I think um, I finally got there. I'm happy with the overall effect. I just need to reduce the opacity of the mask. It's at 100% at the moment. I'll probably reduce it down to something like 75. But I think the next thing to do is to maybe paint uh, another reflection map that's going to add just a little bit of extra reflection in some of these sort of worn out areas. In the shader tree, I've created a new transparent PNG at 4K call this reflection shine and for now I set it to diffuse color because we're going to be painting with white I've not turned the dummy material on I've just left the black material on and I'm going to show you a little trick basically because what I want to do is to use one of our existing textures the leather pattern that we created right at the beginning as a mask and you can do this with the image ink so if I initialize image ink and um, I go to uh, UV mask and I use the clip browser to select the leather pattern that uh, that we created uh, a while ago. Now I don't actually want to paint with image ink so what I've done is I've created a, just a completely blank texture as my image ink and I'm essentially just going to use that as a, as, as a normal airbrush and because I've got the UV mask I can um, I can basically paint using the existing uh, texture that we painted on the model as a mask, you can see that the um, let me just move this out of the way. You can see that the um, the, the leather pattern is is uh, showing up. So I'm going to do a little bit of painting here. I'm then going to go back to the eraser. Let me just see what strength it's at. Yeah, I want to I want to keep and it will keep the mask on the eraser. You can see that the image ink is still um, activated. So I just want to give this a really soft edge. We're going to turn the opacity of this right down. But you can see this is going to use the uh, the existing texture as a nice kind of pattern for our extra... Um, oh, it seems to have swapped out the image. Let's just reload the blank one. Uh, every time I switch tools, it um, reloads the image. That's not a problem because um, I can just do... Um, I can just change the blend mode to erase to erase, so that's fine. Let me just drag out a nice brush. I'm just going to paint a little bit of that shine here. So what I'm what what I'm painting here is just 
a little bit of extra shine maybe in a couple of areas I'm going to try not to overdo it where there's been some wear where maybe the you know the the the, uh, the arms might have been rubbing on the uh, on the ends of the chair or something you know just a little bit of wear where it will make things a little bit shinier and as ever it's going to take a few test renders to um, to, to get the opacity of this map just right but um, I think this is a decent enough start uh, actually just before I drop the tool I am going to set the blend mode to arrays and just go back in have a look at this front on and just erase out I, I, I really do need this to be extremely subtle maybe not too even as well so just gently erase out like that make it a bit patchier because I don't want it to just be a round blob because that wouldn't look natural so make sure to paint a shape in there sort of random kind of shape which always just looks a bit better let's just try that okay so um, let me drop the tool drop the image ink and um, what we need to do is to set the effect to uh, let's try specular amount and let's create an instance of that I don't know why that error message has come up, let's just uh, create an instance of that, set it to reflection amount uh, reflection amount and then go back to the original, let's duplicate it and drag it above, let's set it to specular for now and let's instance that and set it to reflection for now and at this point I'm going to do a test render, the map's obviously going to be way too strong but I just want to see what what it looks like so here's the result of our test render and as predicted it's crazy strong so what I did is I put all these new maps we just created into their own group and I reduced the opacity of the group in stages so I tried it at 20% still way too strong St tried it at 5% still pretty strong so I've gone down to 2% and I'm much happier, especially down here. So if you compare to before we painted the maps, you can see it's definitely having an effect. I might actually turn it down to 1%. But before I do that, I want to soften the harsh edge that's uh, on the pattern up here. So I'm going to go back to the Paint tab and um, initialize the Airbrush tool. It's still in the Arrays Blend mode, which is perfect because that's what I want. Um, I'm not actually going to activate the Image Ink now because I'm literally just erasing. So I'm just going to just try and soften that it doesn't really matter if we lose a lot of the pattern I'm, uh, I just want a tiny bit of it there but just soften those edges and uh, do another test render and uh, this is the final map at uh, 1% so if I compare it to before the map you can see it's just adding a tiny little bit of extra shininess in the areas where I think uh, there might have been some wear so we're looking at the head here and maybe where the back rests and just on, on, on the uh, arm rests it's pretty subtle but it's a nice effect and looking at the render um, I'm quite happy with the color variation I might reduce the opacity of that map a bit more it's at 75% at the moment but I may reduce it um, down to 60 and uh, with the extra shine I think it'd be nice to have a tiny bit of extra shine just in this corner here just to just really as a compositional device just to maybe draw the eye here a bit so um, let's uh, go back to the paint tab and uh, initialize the airbrush with the image ink and make sure the UV um, the UV mask is on which it is and I'm going to change to my blank image and let's uh, temporarily bring the opacity of the group back up to 100 and go back onto our map so that we can see the map that we're painting and go right in the corner with the airbrush make sure it's not set to erase but to normal and the opacity is very low which is good I need it to be low I'm just going to paint a tiny bit of the pattern here in the corner barely visible I hope and um, as per usual, do a test render to see what it looks like. So after yet another test render, you can see the effect if I just compare with the previous one. There's just a little bit of extra shininess there. I'm just going to experiment with painting with a small brush just maybe along the folds to um, see what that does. So I'm just going to make a really, really small brush and quickly just add a 
bit stronger reflections going in there into those corners. Let me zoom right in. And uh, try that. So this is the result of our latest bit of painting and um, if I compare it to before the reflection map was created you can see that it does add a little something. Again it's very subtle but um, overall I'm very pleased with the leather. All of the details that we've added uh, are adding to it in their own way even though they're all really really downplayed but if you zoom in you can see there's a uh, color variation, the reflections are broken up, there's a tiny bit of bump mapping, there's just a lot of subtle details that together really help to give the impression of realistic leather. So I think for now the leather's done and we're just going to move on to the uh, wooden frame and do a few things to that and if anything they're probably going to be even more subtle than what we're doing to the leather. I switched to Photoshop and I've selected just the default hard round brush and I'm just going to open up the brush properties and in shape dynamics I'm just going to give it some size jitter some roundness jitter and a little bit of angle jitter and uh, having done that I've got a transparent PNG at 512 by 512 and I'm just going to paint a scratch like that and uh, you could actually do this in Modo because uh, you can get the same kind of jitter effect in Modo so if you wanted to do it in Modo you just create a plane and uh, map your texture onto that and paint your scratches that way so what I've done is I've painted a series of five scratches uh, so sometimes with just one scratch, sometimes with several. And um, in Modo, if you go to the Images tab and go Add Clip, Load Image and bring in your images, so I've, uh, I've brought my scratches in here, and then select them all in the, um, in the Images tab. I'm going to make sure actually that nothing else is selected, so I'm going to deselect everything, go back to the Images tab and find my scratches again, scratch one through to five. And then I'm going to go to the groups and I'm going to create a new group. Uh, make sure it says from selected items and I'm going to call this group scratches. And switching to my shader tree I'm going to locate the material for the wood frame for the chair and I'm going to add an image. So go to image map, use clip browser this time and I'm going to add one of my scratch images. It doesn't matter which one actually and then I'm going to find the texture locator for that image and um, if I go down to the bottom I'm going to use a texture replicator for the particle source I'm going to choose the wooden frame this uh, wooden frame for the chair and um, now I'm going to make the particle size a little bit smaller, actually a lot smaller, so we're going to go 0 0.8 and I'm going to increase increase the random size to 500% and I'm going to put random rotation at 180 and 180. Now if I go back to the texture layer itself uh, if you remember I, I, I selected one of the images but actually what I want to use is not a single image for the particle replicator but the group that we created so if I scroll down to the bottom of the list so I'll just show you what I'm doing where it says image map image so where you, where you select the actual image itself I'm gonna select our scratches group and that is now uh, spread the scratches over the wooden frame so as per usual we're gonna have to do a test render to see what it looks like this is the result of our test render and you can see the scratches are randomly distributed over the uh, wooden part of the chair so the texture replicator uses the uh, vertices of the mesh as a point source so it's looking great but um, obviously we don't want these black scratches on the chair so we're going to go and change the uh, texture properties so if I select the scratches uh, in the shader tree what I'm going to do is change the effect to um, specular amount to start with and let's uh, create an instance of that and change the effect of that to reflection amount and then I'm going to go back to the original, duplicate that and drag it above and we're going to change that to specular for now create an instance of that and change that to reflection for now and finally go back once more and uh, create another duplicate this time, not an instance and I'm going to keep that I'm going to change that back rather to diffuse color and I'm going to invert it so the scratches are white so um, as before I'm going to put all this in a group and I'm going to call this group 
scratches and do a test render to see what it looks like. So once again I've done a series of test renders. This is the first one where the uh, the new white scratches were set to 100%. Obviously it's way too strong so I, I went and turned the diffuse uh, scratches down to 10%. If I zoom right in you can just about see them but I thought that was probably a little bit too subtle so then I did another render with them set to 20% and that's more or less right I think. You can just pick them up and if I pan over here and you look very carefully you can see how the reflection maps we created from these scratches are also just breaking up the reflection in certain places. It is very very subtle but that's exactly what we're going for. So there's just a couple more things that we're going to do to this uh, wooden frame. So in the shader tree, in our wooden frame material, I've uh, created a new transparent PNG at 2K this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some dings and scratches into this wood. So I'm going to activate a paintbrush with a hard tip, uh, put the nozzle on, and uh, turn jitter on. And I'm going to turn the strength to none and the size to pressure. And set my color to black, drag out a uh, brush, and then it's just a case of um, going in and just painting a few sort of, yeah, little bumps and dings and scratches, that kind of thing, varying the shapes. So just thinking maybe where the wood has, you know, been bumped and scratched or whatever. Just, um, just a case of going around the mesh as usual and um, painting in these random little shapes. So I'm going to do this and pause the video while I finish off. So I've just gone around and painted all these dings and dents so I'm happy with that. I'm going to drop the tool and I'm going to set the effect to displacement so it's surface shading displacement and in the texture layers I'm going to set the low value to minus 30 just so that it pushes into the wooden mesh again and uh, do a test render. And here is the test render of the ding, so you can see that there's a bit more wear and damage that's been added to this uh, wooden uh, frame. I think it's probably a little bit strong actually, so what I've done is I've gone in and reduced the low value to minus 20, and that will bring it uh, back in a little bit. And I've also created two instances that are set to um, specular amount and reflection amount, just to dull the reflections where the scratches are. So with all our texturing mostly done, I think it would be a good time now to do a final quality render. So if you remember, we created a uh, render pass group and um, changed a few settings just to set the uh, blurry reflections to higher quality, the AA samples, and turn the displacement on on the floor. So now would be a good time to go to render, render passes, and to select our render quality pass group, and that will render our final quality pass and hit OK. And so here is our final render. So after all the work that we've done, we've added a lot of really nice details to this leather texture. And I think it's looking pretty realistic. So we we'll just uh, skip to bridge briefly, and uh, we get to compare the before and after. So the difference between dragging a preset and uh, doing some work to create a bespoke texture is night and day, as I hope you can see. So. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful and uh, thank you very much for watching it.